Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be talking all about what I have kind of annotated as 25 different ways to use your Hobonichi Cousin or any planner you have, whether it's a Hobonichi Cousin, whether it's a common planner, whether it's a bullet journal or whatever. I've kind of taken 25 different ways that I have used my planners and how I have, how I've used them, I guess. So if you would be interested in 25 different ways that you can use your planner, if you are uncertain how to use it now that you've bought it, then go ahead and keep watching. Now I will caveat, there are five ways or five different uses that I have annotated, but I have not done, but would like to do in the future. And I will, I will kind of flag those once we get to them. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. I have, this is my 2024 Hobonichi Cousin Avec that I have been using since January. I also have my 2023 full year Hobonichi Cousin. And then I went ahead and pulled out, this is my 2019 bullet journal. Nope, sorry, the 20, this is my 2021 bullet journal. I also have my 2022 journal, but this journal, bullet journal, kind of highlights um, one of the, the ways that I'm going to talk about is in this book. But I wanted to go ahead and bring out my bullet journal, just so you can kind of see, at least outside of Hobonichi, other ways that you can use my, my comments. I think <laughs> I'm trying to make this as easy and as understandable as possible, but the last two years have been Hobonichi, but what I'm going to be talking about, you can use for any planner that you have purchased. So the first use I think is pretty standard. Like it would be a given, but you can use your Hobonichi cousin or your bullet journal as a daily planner. I mean, you, that's what it's built for. <laughs> Specifically, if it's a planner with that already has, you know, days of the week, you know, listed, if it already has a, a format made for you, then obviously it's made for planning. But if you have a bullet journal that, you know, is just dots or whatever, then it can be used as a daily planner. That's, you know. I think it's just a given. <laughs> so you have daily planning. You also have the second use, and I really have been taking this use to heart the last two years, and that is journaling. So in the Hobonichi Cousin, in the daily pages, I have not written anything down for today yet, but in the daily pages, this is where you can do your journaling. This is where you can document your thoughts, experiences, what you've done, like your memories for out, throughout the day. I've also used it to put down pictures of what's happened on that particular day. And it's very beneficial in my mind because you're able to kind of go back and capture what happened years ago by flipping through your journal that's in your planner. So definitely can use your Hobonichi cousin or any of your planners for memory keeping and daily journaling. The other thing that you can use, what I have tip number three, is a work planner. Now this I kind of use in my Hobonichi Cousin, but I don't use it the way that other people have used it. So I use my Hobonichi Cousin and I will, in the weekly pages, I will document like my meetings. So I'll time block how long I'm in meetings every day but you also can use your planners to keep track of work tasks, deadlines, meetings, and things like that. So you could use your planner for not only personal use, or you can also use it as work uses. Tip number four is a meal planner. Now I have not done this in 2024, but in 2023, I did end up kind of using it like a meal planner, but mostly it was like a meal tracker, I would say. So I had at the very bottom 
of my weekly pages, I would put down my breakfast, lunch, and dinner of what I ate that day. It helped me multiple ways. It helped me keep track of what I was eating. So if I saw my blood work next time I went to the doctor was all out of whack, I could go back and say, oh, well, I had McDonald's and then I had Chick-fil-A and then I had a bunch of like fast food fried meals, you know, for the last three weeks and that might have an issue on my blood work or, you know, whatever. You also can use it if you were trying to remember the last time you made spaghetti and you're just like, I can't remember the last time I had spaghetti. You can go through here and say, oh, I haven't had spaghetti for, you know, the last three weeks. Let's go ahead and have a spaghetti night. So you can do, you can use this for a meal planner. Tip number five, and I have been doing this in 2023 and in 2024, and that is I can use this as a workout tracker. So I have on my weekly page, I will put down over here the exercises I plan on doing during that week. I also have a check mark saying whether I did them and this week I did not do my Thursday or Friday workout, but it's a way that you can track how you're progressing and in kind of like fitness goals that you have, you can incorporate them in your planner. Tip number six is one that I have not done, but I would like to do in the future. I just haven't had a good method or kind of, I have not planned ahead on how I'm going to do this. But I have tip number six is a like gratitude journal. And basically you can use your daily pages or maybe even at the end, if you have a Hopanichi Weeks or Hopanichi Cousin, maybe at the end of your day, you can just put down a little bullet of today I was grateful for whatever. Whatever happened during that day, you can kind of, you can annotate at the very bottom of your page, you know, what you are thankful for for that particular day. Or you can do it in your journal pages or your daily pages, some things that you're grateful for during that day as well. So that is something I have not done, but would like to get into in the future. Tip number seven is a sketchbook. So I have not done this in my Hobonichi Cousins. I am definitely not an artist and I don't really doodle very often, but in my bullet journal, because there was nothing on the pages, I had to make things up myself. And so I don't remember, I think there were days, well, here, in November, I went ahead and kind of doodled a November theme of mountains. So you can use your planner and if you have any doodles that you want to do, you can doodle on your planner. So like I said, I'm not a big um, doodler, but you can definitely use your planner to doodle if you would like. Then the number, tip number eight, or the eighth use that you can have for your planner is as a brain dump. I use, I kind of categorize journaling is kind of talking about what's going on during your day. A brain dump, I don't, I have not done in 2024 yet or in 2023. I think in my bullet journals in 2022, I might've done this, but I can't remember. But essentially what it is, is you can, if you have just something on your mind, you just, you're thinking about something and you don't want to forget it, you can use your daily pages as just a quick way to jot down whatever you have that you just thought about that you don't want to forget. You can put it down in your daily page and that way at least it's captured. Um, like I said, I have not done that yet in 2023 or 2024 or in 2023, but I did do that in my bullet journals. I just can't, honestly can't remember which bullet journal it was, uh, but I have done that and it has come in handy, but you definitely can use that to just throw on paper something that's in your head that you don't want to forget. And then you have reflections. And I believe I did this in 2023. I just honestly can't remember. But reflections, what I had done in the past is in the, like your, primarily what I did is on this first page on the Hobonichi Cousin. The first day of the month, you have this like blank page and 
what I have done is I would kind of reflect back on what happened during that month. So I might put down that I read seven books, you know, worth 3000 pages. My subscribers increased from X number to X number. Um, we had a birthday party for so-and-so and went here, but it's kind of like a summation of what happened during that month. Or you can do it during for the week or the, the, the day, however you want to do it. You can use potentially this January page and just kind of do a, it's a way to reflect without having to go and, and find a specific journal entry. Tip number 10 is again something I have not done yet, but can see me wanting to do in the future. And that is something like a bucket list. So you could have a 2024 bucket list and I might end up doing this for 2025, but you could have like a bucket list of everything that you would like to do within that year or even within the next five years or 10 years, but a place that you can like just list out bucket list items that you can add to as a new, you know, something has happened that you want to add to your bucket list. You can put that down in your planner. Tip number 11 is a mind map. Now these are out of all of these uses. This is probably the one that I would have. I'm more likely to not do because it's kind of I'll put a picture on the screen of what I'm talking about, but a mind map is a good way to like brainstorm and organize your ideas. And I think for me though, I'm, I'm pretty consistent. Like I don't really have a lot of new things I want to try to incorporate and try to become part of my routine. I don't really have that. I'm pretty at this point, I'm kind of just status quo, let's, you know, get through the years and do everything I want to do, but I don't really have anything new. But if I did, a mind map would probably be something that I would attempt to try. And this would be a good place that you could put it in your, you know, Hobonichi Cousin in your daily pages at the beginning of a particular month on that, you know, that blank page that you have. This would be a good way that you could use that. But that would be something that you could, that, that would be a use of your planner is to do a mind map for whatever X topic is. And now tip number 12 is to write down like daily quotes or inspirational quotes or meaningful quotes. And this is another one that I have not done, but I have kind of annotated separately, like in my Notion app. If there's a quote or something in a book that really kind of speaks to me, I will annotate that, but I have not put it in my planner yet, but I definitely can see me doing that in the future. If there is a quote that kind of does stand out that I want to remember, I can always write it down in your planner. Daily affirmations is tip number 13 or use number 13. This is again, something I have not done and is essentially at the be specifically in your daily pages at the very beginning of your day, you can start with writing a positive affirmation for that day. And it kind of gets your day started off on the right foot. Tip number 14 is a weather log. Now I did this in 2023 and I, every single day on my monthly page, I put down what the weather was and the temperature for the entire year. What I'm specifically liking about this is I'm able to go back now that it's January of 2024, I can go back and today is the 20th. So in 2023, the high was 52 degrees and the low was 30 degrees with partly sunny. In 2024, in my local area, today's temperature is a high of 22. So going from the exact same day, a year before, there is a 30 degree temperature difference between what happened. So that is another way that you can use your planner is to track your weather. That way you can kind of go back to past years and see kind of how the weather has fluctuated. 
Tip number 15 is using your planner as a birthday and anniversary tracker or basically just to record any kind of important dates, which I have done. I have it on my year at a glance. I do have down at the bottom all of the holidays, birthdays, you know, the tax day, any kind of, you know, important day I have annotated on here. So obviously that kind of goes back with your planning, but you can use your planner to track birthdays and anniversaries. Tip number 16 is a self care log. And this is basically means that you can track and kind of monitor your self care activities and routines. I have it sporadically in my planner. Like I will put down a sticker of when I did, you know, face mask day, where I just took that full day was face masks. It was exfoliating. It was, you know, the in-depth bath time, the foot scrubs, the, you know, that type of activities. I do have stickers in my planners when I do those type of things. I don't have it like listed out, but you could definitely, definitely use your planner to track those type of activities. Tip number 17 is a savings tracker. I have started to incorporate this in 2024. And what I have been doing is I have over here a no spend tracker. So every day that I don't spend money in excess of like, I'm not counting like groceries. Like that's a, I have to make, I have to pay for groceries. I have to pay for bills. I have to pay all those necessary adult things. But this no spend tracker is anything in excess of that. That's like getting coffee at Starbucks, buying new clothes that I don't need. Like if, if my kids need clothes for school, that's a necessity. I have to buy them those. That is not captured in my no spend. It's extra shoes or extra shirts and sweatshirts that I want that I don't need, but I want to buy. That is where I'm tracking here. And so I'll be able to see all of the days that I have done a no spend. It's definitely, I don't track dollars, like how much money I have saved or how much money I have spent, but I do have a visual tracker of the my no spend days. You also could definitely do, you know, a way to actually physically say that I spent $32 and 15 cents at Target and, you know, have it on your daily page. So if you want to have a specific spending tracker, you definitely can use your planner for that as well. Tip number 18 are meeting notes. I did have in 2022 bullet journal, which I'm not going to show, but I did have meeting notes in there that I would be able to refer back to. Tip number 19 is a mood tracker. This is something I did do in 2023. I'm not doing in 2024, but in 2023 on like the year at a glance, I did use uh, this planner to document my mood. So I had, um, at the beginning of the year, I had great, good, meh, and bad. And that's kind of the moods that I tracked for the first six months. And then the last six months of the year, I expanded my moods to where I had at the end of the year, happy slash good, tired, meh, sick, annoyed slash frustrated, cranky and sad. So you definitely could use your planner to do a mood tracker. Tip number 20 is interview preparation or interview like recaps. This I have done in 2021. The job that I got hired for that I'm currently doing now, I do have in here all of the questions and the notes that I was asked during my interview. Now, what is beneficial to this is if I decide I want to apply for a different job, doing the same, the same or similar type activities that I am now, I know I can refer back to 2021 because that was when I got hired for my current position. And I can look and see what that hiring person had asked me. And maybe some of those questions would be asked in the, the new job. So it could help you recap and remember what you were asked for your current job. And it also can help you prepare for potential questions at a new job. So if you are changing like career fields, this might not be beneficial for you. So going from, you know, job title one 
to a completely different job title, you might not be asked the same questions, but you definitely could use your planner to document your questions that you were asked and maybe just, you know, a generic communication question could still be the same type of question you might be asked even in a new career field. So definitely have used the bullet journal and my planners to document interviews and have definitely been referring back to this as people have asked me to help them prepare for questions at an interview and also to help me remember what questions I have been asked. Tip number 21 is a social media planner. I have done this both in 2023 and in 2024. And basically what it is, is I will list out what type of content I want to try to put out during either the month or the week. And you can list whether, you know, what those content ideas are, and then you can kind of check them off if you decide to do them. And so I have in both of my planners, whenever I want to record a particular video, I'll put down the video title and then, you know, when I want to record it and then when I want to edit it and when it needs to be uploaded. And then if I have an Instagram post that I want to try to do, I can list that. So you can use this as a social media planner to help you plan and organize any social media content. And then we have tip number 22 is a wish list. I had this in 2023 at the very end of my planner. I would have a page dedicated to things that I would like to have bought for me for Christmas or birthdays or Mother's Day or anything like that. It's a way that I'm able to jot down really quickly ideas that I might see on a YouTube channel or if I see some new book or a new shirt or something like that, that I really like that I don't want to buy for myself, you can use your planner to kind of list out all of those items. So when it comes to someone asking you what you would be interested for, for your birthday, you already have something identified that you don't have to sit down and try to rack your brain at the last minute to provide somebody some ideas. Tip number 23 is a family planner. This I definitely do in both of my Hobonichi cousins. I have two girls, I have a 14 year old and a six year old. So I definitely use this to list out their appointments, their doctor's appointments, their social activities like with sleepovers, um, any kind of school related activity. I definitely put this in my planner so that way I know when I need to set aside time to do something for them while I'm also documenting all of my personal appointments. So definitely use the family planner thing in my, in my planners. This is my personal and my family planner. Tip number 24 is a sleep log. I do this, I did this in 2023, the entire year. And then I've also been doing it in 2024. And that is on my weekly page. I have a little graph of how many hours I sleep a night. Just that way I can see, you know, on Tuesday, I was really tired. I only had like five and a half hours of sleep. And then this was me going back into work. School was closed. So if I was kind of in a bad mood that day, I would know it's probably because I had no sleep, really. Kids were home. I had two email or two meetings. I had a bunch of emails, so I was probably really stressed. So that would probably correlate highly to what my mood is on that particular day. So definitely can use this as a sleep log. And then the last tip is using your planner for a book log. I use that in 2023. And I've kind of been doing it in 2024, but in 2023, I used at the very end of the Hobonichi, they have a top 100 list. I use this page to track every single one of the books that I read during the year, along with their ratings. I, I originally was only anticipating reading 72 books for that year. This year in 2023, I read 109 books. I only have listed the top 100, but you can use it to keep track of all of the books that you've read. Or what I've also done is on my weekly pages, I will track, and I, I did this also in 2023, I will track the books that I am reading and then how much like percent wise I am where I'm at in that book. So currently I just started rereading New Moon and I'm at 5% for that book. 
So that is a definite way that I used in my planners. I am a, I am a big reader. So my Hobonichi cousins are definitely tied to planning, but also very heavily tied to reading. And so with that, that is all of the tips that I have or uses that I have for my planner, specifically to the Hobonichi cousin, but definitely you can use all of these tips can be implemented in bullet journals, regular planners that you get at Target, um, any other type of notebook, you can use all of these tips for planning purposes. With that, thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that button. I would greatly appreciate it. I really love talking to everybody about planning and I would love to have you as part of my little planning group. So please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Please make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it and I will see everybody in my next video. Bye!